Welcome, Grip TV Nation. I'm Matt Malone, and this is the full video of the Skip Barber Racing School event that I was lucky enough to go down to in Georgia at beautiful Road Atlanta. Big shout out to Otto and the guys at iRacing for making this happen. Sim Racer turned real life racer. Am I Glenn McGee? No, this was a one day event. Skip Barber puts on. It was with the MX-5. That's right. My favorite car ever. The Mazda Miata MX-5 at Road Atlanta. The same Road Atlanta that's been laser scanned. And we experience on iRacing at, on the sim. Oh, man. Many a duels. Many a battles. Many good races have been fought here at beautiful Road Atlanta. So this was my chance, my opportunity, an opportunity of a lifetime to get on the track in real life in the MX-5. And oh man, it was wild stuff. Before we get to the footage, just want to remind you, go to soon.griptvteam.com to see the full list of Grip TV streamers. Head on over to the YouTubes, follow me on Twitter, and oh, don't forget about the Twitch, twitch.tv slash showdown1983, where you have a chance to win $12 in iRacing credits every fortnight. That's right, every two weeks, there's one winner. Bet on the races have some fun in chat. Do whatever you got to do. It's a great community. You guys are the best, and I love each and every one of you. All right, let's get to it. Oh, my goodness. Here we are at beautiful Road Atlanta. We are at the pits on the left side of the front stretch is where they set us up here, and our first couple times we went out onto the track, it was a lead and follow scenario. In front of me there is one of the instructors the two instructors were uh, awesome guys. They were willing to help. Definitely a, a learning experience for everybody out there. And uh, here we are. Oh, that's turn one at beautiful Road Atlanta. It was a great day. I think it was upper 80s. The sun was shining. It was a hot one, but oh boy, it's hot, hot Atlanta. That's what you get there. So the lead and follow, uh, you know, once you get out on the track, it's a little slow. They're not going to push you too hard. But uh, here we are in the MX-5. Here is what my MX-5 looks like. That's right, the number 22 car looks a little rough. Kind of like after I've been through a whole season there in iRacing, that's about what it would look like. But there it is, it ran great. Uh, none of the uh, gauges worked except for the RPM. So I didn't know how fast I was going, but it didn't matter because it was awesome. And I have to say, doing a lot of sim racing especially on this track with this car and to be able to get out there in the real car on the real track uh it was just it, it was amazing i i couldn't have asked for anything better uh the trip down there was great george is great uh, the weather was great the guys everybody that was there was great and uh just had a, a complete blast all my little boyhood dreams were fulfilled here at beautiful road atlanta so here we are hey that's the straightaway coming out after turn seven so they would have you on the long straightaway here. You got time to switch things around. So you, if he puts the old blinker on, you got to get over and let the two guys pass. It was uh, two groups of lead and follow, three cars each. There were six people that were there. Pretty small group, which uh, allowed for more track time. Not, I'm not sure. You guys are going to have to count how many laps that I did, although I'm not going to be showing all the footage. I may put all the footage at the very end. Uh but uh, there is a, quite a bit of footage and quite a few laps. It may get a little monotonous after a while. And we're going to be skipping around here a little bit, but uh, oh boy, 10A, 10B going on through there. Now, I know a lot of people uh, after the event were asking a lot of questions, and I may not be able to answer them all in this video. So if you do, if I don't answer any of your questions, uh, go ahead and leave some uh, questions in the comments down below. And if I get a lot of questions of, of things that I didn't cover in this video, I may just do an additional video to uh, answer, uh, do some Q&A. So uh, keep that in mind if I don't answer any of the questions uh, that you may have. Just put it in the comments, and if I get a bunch of them, I'll, I'll make an additional video with just some of this footage uh, in the background. But here we go through turn one. Um, the elevation changes. I noticed this also when I went uh, with, I uh, actually met up with John D. Allen and Hans Plays Games at Beautiful Road America up in Wisconsin. And we went and seen an indie race with Will Power and just walking around the track, 
you notice the elevation changes in the track are much more severe uh, than you kind of experience in the sim. Um, but uh, maybe just a different point of view and actually being there is what does it. But the elevation changes here at Road Atlanta are ridiculous, uh, especially coming down through uh, turn 12, the final turn coming down in the, the straightaway, the front stretch is a massive downhill. The S's you just saw we went down is a, a, a quite a dramatic uh, downhill. Uh, so you don't quite catch that in the sim uh, as much as in real life. That was definitely one of the things that I noticed. Now you see again, we're coming out of turn seven. We're gonna switch it around a little bit. Now before, uh, let me tell you a little bit about how the uh, class is if you're interested in doing a one day racing school for a Skip Barber. It is an all day event. So you show up at about 8 o'clock, they do a little bit of classroom talk, they get to know who you are, what kind of track experience you have, what your daily driver is, you know, just so they know who they're dealing with. You don't want any crazies out there. So it was a pretty small group, so we were able to uh, get to know each other quite a bit. And uh, you do have to know how to use a manual, uh, manual transmission. Um, they also would like you to be able to heel toe downshift, which uh, isn't the easiest. <laughs> and so uh, I tried it a little bit, but after a while I just started jamming it in third and it seemed to work just fine. But on this track here, they want you to use fourth gear for the majority of the time that you're out on track. So the only time that you're going to be in third gear is turn 7 and 10A. Otherwise, you're going to be in fourth gear the entire time. So this is all fourth gear, all fourth gear through the S's. Um, and fourth gear, they say it has a lot of torque. And usually, I mean, they're right. But I can imagine if you were to choose a different track, uh, Skip Barber goes to a lot of different tracks around the country. So you may get into a situation if you're at a different track where you're going to have to be down downshifting a lot. And uh, just keep that in mind that if maybe you can practice with a manual transmission to work on your uh, heel-toe downshifting. But uh, for somebody that, for me, that doesn't do it in the sim, doesn't do it in real life, to be able to try to pick that up right away and, and feel comfortable with it and safe with it for the first day, it was uh, quite difficult. So me and some of the other guys just said, yeah, we're just jamming it in third, you know. So like coming up right here in the turn seven before the long straight, you're getting it into third gear, and then away you go. So uh, a little hesitant there, uh, getting it into third, but, um, you know, that's just the way that goes. So, you know, you can kind of tell we're going a little slow. The instructor car is uh, not pushing too hard for good reason, I, I would imagine. This is uh, one of the first or second sessions uh, that we did early in the morning so we're just kind of trying to get our bearings doing the best we can there to uh, use the proper racing line and also if uh, we got any stragglers we kind of got to wait up for them we can't just keep going so as you can see now I'm behind the instructor car you got to leave some room pushing pushing you know after a while they did start to go a little bit quicker as they thought we were competent enough to uh, keep up the pace now, all of this video footage that I'm showing you has been stabilized, so it does look a little warpy, and uh, that's just one of the things with a GoPro. It's going to be really shaky, and I know this warp thing is a little funky, but it's much better than a really shaky cam, so uh, this is the best quality I was able to get, and we do have some more uh, some different uh, uh, camera angles uh, that we will show you. We, I guess it's just me. Here I am. Hey, how you guys doing? Are you enjoying the video? Oh, it's so magical. Look how nice of a day it is. The sun shining. There's those nice fluffy white clouds. Oh my gosh, I couldn't ask for anything better. I mean, it was really hot. I was sweating. I mean, I was sweating just like I would during a regular Mazda race. You know, but we're just cruising here. But uh, here we go through the S's again. Amazing. I mean, it's a real big downhill there. But I guess looking from dash cam, I got some other footage that shows the... Uh, extreme elevation change a little bit better but uh, I guess from the cockpit view it, it, it looks a lot like eye racing I am I'm impressed looking at the footage itself I mean when you're there yeah I mean when I was there in the car doing laps I mean you do feel I did feel like 
I had been there before in some different way. It almost felt like a dream, you know, because, I mean, a simulator is a simulator, and, it, you know, you're looking at a flat screen. But I did feel very uh, at home when I was on the track. Everything kind of came up to me as far as it, when it should and how it should, and things looked like they should, and I felt very uh, comfortable uh, going around the track. It was very surreal, very surreal experience because uh, I've done a lot of laps here uh, with this, uh, with the Mazda here on the sim. So getting there in real life, it was really an amazing experience. But uh, here we go, we're doing some more laps. And they did give us extra track time. They said because of the, the small group that we had, we were able to have uh, some extra track time. And these sessions would last anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes. Um, and then we'd go into the pits and then we would stop we'd get out and you know have a drink of water because it was hot and uh, you know you got a full fire suit on a full fire suit on with a helmet and everything so uh, it's good to get out of the car and then we would you know they'd be kind of watching us in their rear view mirror and then they would give us hints and tips and and uh, let us know what we were doing wrong what we were doing right if we had any questions uh, so there were definitely, uh, when they call it a school, uh, Skip Barber Racing School, they mean it. It's not just one of those, because I've done the things where you go to the track, you pay money, you drive a fast car on a track, and it's just for the experience. They're not really there to teach you how to race, you know, they're just, hey, look, get in the cockpit and go, you know, have fun, and then that's it. But this, I mean, this is your, your, st your small s steps into becoming like uh, if you really want to pursue racing as a uh, as something you really want to do this is how you would get started I mean they treat it like a school you know they're answering questions they're telling you what you're doing wrong telling you to go faster like later on when um, we start doing the hot lapping uh, they got people positioned at different parts of the track and they'll tell you over the radio hey you know you can go a little bit quicker here you know watch your line through this corner blah 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 you know uh, so they're, they are there actively wanting to try to get you to go faster. Um, and, you know, if you're doing anything stupid, you know, they want you to be safe as well. But um, everybody in the groups were, were really good and safe, and so there wasn't any of those issues really. But uh, making sure you're in the correct gear, making sure you're hitting the, the apexes and hitting your exit cones and all that stuff. But... Um, yeah, I was really impressed by their knowledge of racing and uh, the uh, uh, willingness to try to teach us uh, what's going on. So we're going to move on to some other, a different camera angle here, and we're going to take a look. All right, guys, here we go. This is, I put the GoPro on the back end, try to get a little bit different perspective here than just straight on the windshield. So you can see a lot more of the car here. This is uh, later in the day after lunch. They take you out to a very nice lunch. And they do what they call a stop box session. It's where you can go as fast as you can go. And they spread you out. No, go, go, go. It's a standing start. Rev it up. The Mazda wants it. The Mazda loves it. The Mazda needs it. Yes. So you can really tell that uh, video stabilization going with that uh, roll bar warping a little bit. But hey, it was shaky out there. So they, like I said before, they got people stationed throughout the track. And they're going to give you tips and give you hints on how to go faster. Or if you're doing something wrong. But this is a chance to kind of stretch your legs a little bit. After all the uh, practice laps that we had, you should be able to, you should know the proper racing line. And hopefully some of the elevation changes are, are shown here a little bit better with this view. But, um, yeah, here it is. This is, uh, I believe this is one of the first uh, sessions that we had to uh, go ahead and, and go as fast as we want. So I uh, tried to go as fast as I can. I mean, they talk about the fear factor. And, uh, well, you don't want to die because you can't just hold the escape button and get a new car. This is your life. Your life is in your own hands, you see. That's the way this goes. So over the blind right-hander, in through the S's. And it's, it really is uh, amazing. And, and, and people ask about uh, how is the force feedback? How is driving this car compared to the sim? 
And what I can tell you right off the bat is that you'll notice that I don't you don't have to turn the wheel as much in real life than I do in the sim. Now maybe that's something that I do wrong in the sim, but uh, what I do when I'm racing on the sim is that I, I try not to turn the wheel more than 90 degrees. But you can watch some of this video and you can see that I don't even get close to a 90 degree turn with the wheel. And so uh, that's what I noticed right off the bat is the steering's really tight and you can turn really easily. Um, other than that, the, the wheel, um, yeah, the wheel's pretty strong, um, but not as strong as you would think. Uh, I mean, I've only had a little bit of experience with a direct drive wheel, but I would imagine it's pretty dang close. Uh, you just feel way more connected to the car when you're driving in real life because you're in the damn car. You're feeling G-forces. You, the wind's going through your hair uh, under the helmet and you're you know it's real life you it's the experience is so much more different now the fear factor the fear factor and the g-forces are the two biggest things now not to say that i was afraid but i mean there are walls especially coming out of turn 12 and you're going down the hill and you know you can do it in full throttle or you think you can and you should be able to but you always lift a little bit because that wall's coming right at you. So uh, that's what keeps you alive is the fear factor. And so uh, that that played a pretty big role. And, and the G-forces, I mean, especially when you uh, are slamming on the brakes going into turns, it really throws you forward. And it's just something that a sim racer has absolutely zero experience with. Even with a, with a, a motion simulator, you're not going to get... Uh, those types of uh, forces uh, than you as you do in real life so definitely the f the G forces and the fear factor are the two biggest things and uh, and sim racing you know sim racing is sim racing you're never gonna get that exact feel for it but um, as far as the racing line the speeds that you should be going the gear in that you're in the correct gear and the lines that you're taking is very very similar to the simulator and in real life so those are just a couple of things um, but with the force feedback um, I mean my I have a v2 base with the Porsche rim it's um, I mean obviously the real one is a little bit stronger but uh, I mean there's not a huge difference I think I mean you don't it, uh, how do I put this? The real life car, you feel everything. Um, but then again, there's also some added feels that the uh, V2 base and a simulator rim is going to give you because you don't have other things that rely on. So a lot of times in a simulator, they actually put more, they try to put more information through the wheel so you understand what the car is doing. Uh, a lot of that but um, it's just more rigid in real life more more uh, more real time kind of feel if you know what I mean but uh, otherwise it wasn't a huge difference but you do grip the wheel I had noticed myself I'd be gripping the wheel a lot harder in the in, in the real life um, maybe that's that fear factor kicking in but as you can see doing a couple laps here uh, coming out of turn seven you try to fly out of turn seven Turn seven was probably my worst turn out here just because of the downshift. I just thought about it way too much. Now here, he's going to give me a little lesson through the radio. Apparently, I didn't go very fast through turn 10A. Let's listen in. Hey, Matt, I saw him down here in uh, turn 10 right in front of you. Hey, there's more speed you can carry down that hill. Uh, feel free to challenge the brakes, man. Uh, start at the, I don't know, two and a half. See what you got. Well, I think you can go a lot deeper than that, but carry some more speed, okay? 10-4. So there you go. They're actively trying to get you to go faster. Now, like I was saying, when the only two turns that you have to downshift are, are turn 7 and turn 10A. And I and I really was really second-guessing myself as far as getting it into third because the car slows down so quickly that you got to get into third quick before you start your turn in. So here I try to push it. Faster there. Come on out of there. Get on out of there. 
get up over that hill. Get her in fourth gear. So fourth gear here, and then you can get it into fifth gear once you start going straight. And according to iRacing, once you're in fifth gear, you're going 100 mile an hour. So we're we're going over 100 mile an hour here. The the Mazda is capable of reaching speeds over 100 miles an hour. I'm surprised you didn't know that. So uh, trying to do some hot lapping here. You just try to get. It, I was just trying to get into like a rhythm and hitting all the spots. I didn't want to push it too much. Because uh, I thought it might get, you know, I, I didn't want to like spin out or anything. Nobody else had spun out, but uh, I just didn't want to push it too hard. And the and the car itself is like, oh man, it was kind of beat up. It was riding a little rough, but uh, I mean, I, I would say since it was just a one, I mean, you you're having a lot of information coming at you as far as uh, you know sensory overload. It's the first time I've ever actually driven a car this fast on a track so you're trying to take in all this information you're trying to learn the car you're trying to feel what the car is doing you're trying to maintain that speed through the corners you're trying to figure out what this car is capable of doing under braking and I found that it's very good at braking it's amazing how fast this thing can slow down so you just take it all in and I would imagine with like a three-day course where you have time to you know sleep on it a little bit think about your experience come back the next day and try to work on uh, different things to try to get yourself to be better I mean it, it's a progression you can't just start out and you're you know you, you know, you, you're, you're the best driver ever it's just not gonna happen you need that time you need track time you need time to think about what you're doing so they just let us uh, keep doing laps we did about a 25 30 minute session of this and then we you know you go you stop in the pits and you uh, talk about things, they tell you what you did right, tell you what you did wrong, and then you head back on out. And uh, we're going to switch over pretty soon here to uh, some more, some uh, dashboard uh, video of some more uh, hot lapping. But uh, I'm just trying to think of any questions that people may have. Um, it was a beautiful day at Road Atlanta, let me tell you. Just look at that sunshine. I mean, I asked them, I called them, I'm like, well, do you guys do this in the rain? And they said, yes, we do it in the rain. I mean, obviously, if there's like a tornado or something, they probably wouldn't do it. But, so, if if you're thinking about doing something like this, and it does rain, make sure you show up, because they're still going to do this in the rain. Uh, they use, like, a sport tires. They were not slicks, uh, so they could probably handle pretty well in the, uh, in the rain. But uh, just keep that in mind if you plan on doing something like this that uh, pretty much rain or shine the event will go live and uh, I'm so glad it wasn't raining because you're able to see really what the car is able to do now as you can see to the right there is a uh, different configuration of the track and that part of the track didn't look like it had been used in a long time there's a lot of grass and weeds growing up through the track so I'm not sure if Road Atlanta uh, ever uses that configuration anymore, but I know we have it in iRacing, but um, it was just it was just interesting to see uh, that part of the track. A couple times I thought about hanging a right there, getting an epic lap time in, but that would have been cheating. So another another lap here, you know. I'm trying to do better, you know. Trying to do good. Trying not to die. I don't know. I didn't want to push it too hard. I was a little scared, not gonna lie. And uh, I'm used to sitting behind, sitting behind the, the old, the old monitors, drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes, hanging out with you guys, reading chat. I didn't have any time to read the chat. But uh, all right, we're gonna move on to some other hot lapping. Here we go. All right, guys, different camera angle. Here we go. We're back up on the dashboard. You can see that GoPro clip right there. That's actually for so you can take video of yourself, which actually did get some of that. But um, I'll show some of that at the end, I guess. But here we go. Trying to get a little bit quicker. This is one of the final sessions of the day where we're still uh, trying to hot lap here. And be my guest if you want to time some of my laps, but uh, they're probably pretty slow. I don't know. I can probably go much faster in a simulator, obviously. But, uh, man, beautiful turn 12 here. And that wall to the left, it comes at you quicker than you think. 
And turn one here, turn one, your initial turn, and if you see the cone, see the cone on the left there. I found it kind of difficult to set the car up. It's really far to the left. I always left some room there because uh, the just the nature of the track there. I didn't want to put a tire off on the left side, so I didn't always get the best setup for turn one. But uh, it's such a fast turn that you just kind of go with the flow there. But I tell you what, it was an amazing experience. I uh, definitely want to thank again Otto and the guys over at iRacing for having the contest that they had and uh, giving me the opportunity to go to Road Atlanta. I'll never forget it. One of the most uh, memorable experiences I've had in a long time. I'm glad I got some footage for it for myself and definitely for you guys to uh, try to compare the real life with uh, iRacing. And I will be... Uh, at the very end of the video, I will put a side-by-side -side of a lap. I'll try to replicate in iRacing uh, one of these laps that I did in real life. And we'll go side-by-side -side and we will uh, compare the two. See, uh, maybe it'll just tell us what kind of lap time or what kind of uh, speeds we were going. I'll try to replicate it the best I can. Now, this is the older Mazda, so I'll use the older... Uh, circa 2015 uh, Mazda uh, did recently get replaced by the global Mazda MX-5 and iRacing so I'll use the old one and uh, it'll be good times maybe I'll even try to get the same camera view I know you can change the cockpit view we'll see it'll be at the end of the video but uh, yeah just more hot lapping here or you know slow mediocre hot lapping because I'm an old man and I'm uh, I'm old, you know. What do you? What can I tell you? This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. Oh my gosh! I can see the comments now. Malone, you're slow, please. Where are the off tracks? Why didn't you hit any cones? You didn't do a 360. No barrel rolls. Oh my gosh! This isn't the Malone I know. Unbelievable, you guys. But I. But if you guys are actually interested in doing anything like this in real life, dude, I tell you what, it's 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 worth it just for the experience alone and. What, I tell you what was really surreal is after I got home, the first thing I did, well, you guys were there. I, I streamed. I think it was the next day after I got home. I got on and I loaded up. <laughs> I rode Atlanta and I picked the the same weather and everything. And I uh, got the old Mazda out there and I was kind of walking you guys through how I did it and to race the the same car and the same track in the sim right after you did it in real life that was surreal that was very i've never felt anything like that before it was just so weird and it just felt like i was just there and everything looked uh it just fe felt like i just knew everything about the track and you know i'm like oh i was just over there you know but you can't get out of the car in the sim and like walk around like we were over at the pits on the left side here but uh it was just, it was really fun. Then I had the camera too and I was walking you guys through the uh, the outskirts of the track and everything and telling you what was actually there and what was different. So that was that was a really uh, fun experience. But as you can see, we're hot lapping here and I kind of catch the guy in front of me. So that made me feel good. We didn't, they never timed us. They don't really time you. They don't like declare a winner or anything. Um so there wasn't like a they didn't give out any trophies or anything or you know nothing like that it's uh it's mainly it's like a school so you know you're not in direct competition with the other people it's mainly for yourself so you can learn try to get better and uh you know if you're thinking about furthering uh your racing education then you know you can they give you a discount if you want to sign up for an additional school right then and there. You know, maybe try out the three-day school, and they have uh, that available. But um, really great time. Um, if you could, tr my suggestion is if you're going to do this, try to pick a time where they're at a track that's close to you. Because I had to fly down to Georgia. I live in Illinois, and to get to Georgia, I mean, you got to fly. I think it was like a 16 hour drive so didn't really want to do that so I did end up having to fly down there you know just the hassle of traveling 
I was waiting to see if they were going to have it at Road America. Now they do offer some three-day advanced driving classes at Road America, but it's pretty few and far between. So uh, Road Atlanta, they do have their own uh, Skip Barber Racing School building, so they are here quite a bit. I believe they also have one at uh, Sebring, and down in Florida they have their own little building there, so they're at those two tracks quite a bit. And yes, you can choose to do the Skip Barber car. And uh, I, I, I could have chose the Skip Barber car, but I couldn't resist the opportunity to uh, drive the Mazda Miata. I mean, come on. Please. That's what I live for. So here we go in this turn seven again. I suck at downshifting. Try to get as fast out of there as you can. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys uh, were able to uh, kind of get an idea on what it's like. Um, you know what I think I'll do? I think I will upload all of the raw footage as its own video. I mean, it's pretty long. I got a lot of raw footage here. Uh, I mean, it's not just all like me sitting in the car in the pits. It's racing footage, you know. So maybe I'll... Uh, go ahead and upload that as a separate video if you really want to watch like all of the raw footage I mean it's pretty much just mostly what you see here lap after lap I and mean, we did a lot of laps I haven't counted them but if I put up all the raw footage you guys can count them and find my uh, fastest lap how about that it'll be a challenge but uh, we'll watch a couple more laps here we'll let the uh, Mazda do its thing hear that power and then we will do the iRacing real life split screen so i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you guys so much don't forget to go to soon.griptvteam.com to see the full list of grip tv streamers check us out on twitch check out the youtube we do broadcasts of lotus races we're we're doing a broadcast of an oval league coming up soon oh my gosh it's amazing the commentators the grip tv commentators are great you guys are the best check it all out i love you and have a good one okay bye bye